Welcome to the Online Course Masters Show, where we learn from the best online course creators how to better create and sell our very own courses. I'm your host, Phil Ebener, and in this episode, I chat with Ilana Wexler all about how you can get started with paid advertising to grow your online course business. This is going to be an epic episode, so get your pen and paper ready to take a lot of notes. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to watch the video version of this episode and see an archive of all our past guests. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Please, if you haven't done so already, leave a review for this show wherever you listen to it. Now, let's get straight to the interview. All right, everyone, Phil Ebener. I'm here with Alana Wexler from Sydney, Australia. I'm so excited for this conversation. We're going to do a deep dive into advertising for online course creators. That's what Alana has specialized in, in terms of pay-per-clip, per-clip, pay-per-click advertising. And I'm excited to have her on the show. So uh, welcome and thanks for being here. Thanks so much, Fields. Uh, lovely to be on your show. Yeah, I was actually on your show uh, recently, and so you're starting your podcast, so it's kind of the perfect thing we can be on each other's show. And I have a lot of people yeah. asking me, how does paid advertising work for course creators? And I am not an expert in, in that, and I myself actually would love to do more of this, um, but it seems very daunting. So we're going to dive into sort of everything for people getting started with advertising. But before we do that, can you just share a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today? God, how long have you got? I'm joking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so um, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and uh, I guess I'm not really like your typical story as somebody who sort of broke out of um, their job to do their own thing. Um, I actually, well, so I used to work in the corporate world. I used to be a data analyst, much to the shock and horror of some people. Um, and I'm not someone who, you know, as I said, like, you know, hated my job and always wanted to work for myself. Actually, I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I used to love what I did and had every intention of kind of sticking with it. But um personal life got in the way of that and I had uh, a baby and um, I didn't want to leave my baby. So basically I chose my own journey purely because um, I used to work seven to seven, Mm. um, you know, and I thought, well, they're the hours that he's awake. Like (laughs) when when exactly do I see him, you know, Mm -hmm. and I couldn't really work part time. So um, it was a bit of an easy decision, but that's kind of what sparked the journey to to do my own thing and then it's been a real journey of discovery to discover PPC world um, lots of trial and error lots of failed adventures um, but I guess some might say you know I was a bit stubborn with it and persevered and and, and landed on on this and I love it and I, I guess you know when I look back it kind of makes sense in terms of my data analytical background mm-hmm fits quite nicely with this but when you don't know it exists like I didn't even know it existed I was so in consumed in my finance world that I didn't even like it, it blew my mind when I found out about it actually yeah yeah well that's I mean it is exciting and the idea of being able to advertise to people around the world and target specific people to grow your audience to you know spend a dollar to hopefully make two dollars or more or or even a dollar and ten cents that is exciting for people Uh, so you started Mm. green arrow digital your um, company around seven years ago and um, so that's what you're doing today but you also have your online courses that are on udemy that are starting to ramp up Um, so what's like a typical day like for you uh, working for yourself you know, like I, I, I'm such a trial and error kind of person. Like my Udemy courses were purely spawned from. I so I used to do a lot of business networking, and people would ask me kind of to help them with their AdWords account, and they kind of weren't my target market, so I didn't really want to um, say no. So I created a Udemy course specifically to give away to them, so that I didn't kind of. I'd do something nice for them and I was going to give it for free, um, but I then wouldn't have to kind of say, no, I'm not going to take you on. Um, And that kind of sparked the whole online course creation journey. But uh, yeah, a typical day for me is is so varied. We've got so many clients in so many different industries across Facebook and AdWords and 
Um, so I don't really think I have a typical day <laughs> because, um, yeah, we're so we do so much. So we've got our agency which does it um, campaign management on behalf of clients, but then we've got our um, our membership which uh, has all our courses mm. in our membership mm. as well as the Udemy courses. So. Cool. There's a lot going on. Lots yeah. of balls in the air. I didn't even realize you had it, your own membership kind of program. So that's through Green Arrow Digital or something that's else? That's through Green Arrow Digital. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So my Udemy courses just have a portion of my online training. It's not – certainly I wouldn't say it's my best stuff. My best stuff is on my own platform and I use the Udemy courses as a bit of a feeder. For mm-hmm. it. Nice. Wow. Okay. So I know we can talk about a lot of stuff. Um, and so we're going to dive right into advertising um, for specifically for course creators, but really anyone who's marketing a digital product or a website or anything can probably use these tips too. But let's kind of lay the scene and talk about what are the different types of ads out there right now in terms of, I know there's Google, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. And Mm. I guess before we talk about what ones you recommend, just talk about why you think advertising is a good option for online course creators. Um, Well, I think you either, you either pay with money or with time. And Mm. the beauty with the PPC stuff is you can develop all your learnings really, really quickly. So you can save a lot with time. Yes, it's going to cost you some money, but in terms of speed of implementation, um, you you know, compare AdWords to organic SEO, you buy your way to the top and you determine what are your converting keywords that you then will invest with SEO. So, you know, SEO might take you a little while and that's it's still going to cost you money as well. Um, but AdWords is, well, any kind of PPC, like, as I said, I just think you, you just speed up the process. And if you can make it profitable, well, then it's just one piece of a very big pie, right? Mm -hmm. There's no reason why you'd stop it. Um, And in fact, we've got many clients that the AdWords or the Facebook ads are just one part of an entire marketing funnel um, that they're all interrelated. You know, like we live in a multi-device, multi-platform world where someone might click on one of our Facebook ads and then they'll Google search and click on organic listing. So Mm -hmm. it's just there's so many moving parts. I, I'm not a person who believes that PPC is all you should do. I just think it's one of the many things that you should have in your Swiss army knife of, of, um, tools in your arsenal. Got it. Yeah. And, um, just following up on that, I guess, where should like we be as an online teacher, where should we be before we even like think about online or paying for ads? Like what kind of website should, should we have a website what kind of website what should we have on that website what kind of product do we need an email list and i'm assuming we need all of these things but i'm kind of like where can people start using ads right at the beginning or do they have to kind of wait a while to start all right so i think if you've never done ads before um, like one of the first questions I ask someone if I take them on either as a student or as a client is, first of all, how much is a lead worth to you? And that's the metric that I live and live and die by basically is the client tells me how much a lead is worth to them. And if I can acquire that lead for less than whatever the value is, then we're winning. Then, then let's just scale this thing and let's buy as many because it's under that threshold. So, that's I think that what lots of people struggle with is how much is that lead worth to, worth to them, and I'm a big, big believer in not the lifetime value of that customer, but the 30 day value of that customer. Mm. Because if you're going to run your that CP, it's called the CPA, the cost per acquisition number at a lifetime value, well, you're going to hit cash flow issues pretty quickly, especially if that lifetime is a year, mm-hmm. you know. So I personally prefer a 30-day lifetime value of your customer because then you you won't have any cash flow issues. So that's sort of question number one. And then we very much view when we start out with people is what what are the assets that you own? And assets being, have you got a remarketing list? So remarketing being showing ads to somebody who's come to your website before. So install the remarketing codes from AdWords and Facebook on your own website and start building that remarketing list because 
the people who are most likely to buy from you are the ones who have engaged with your brand through whatever means and, and however much. So have you got a remarketing list that we can kind of get some easy wins? Number two, have you got a database that we can upload to Facebook and to Google? Number three, have you got a big Facebook presence? People, lots of people who like your Facebook page, in which case you can – it's a form of remarketing. You know, they've, they've liked your page, they've engaged with your brand, they've effectively put up their hand a little bit and said, yes, I want to hear more from you even though I haven't quite bought – and these, these are your lowest hanging fruit. And often we will start just by doing remarketing purely to see what offer people will buy. Because if those people don't buy your offer, well, then you're going to have a much more difficult, um, you know, problem trying to sell the people who've never heard from you. Mm, okay. So it's so starting out, you're not even, we're not even necessarily growing our audience to, to trying to get complete strangers to become leads. We're just focusing on retargeting to existing people who are already followers, who are already visiting our website. So that's probably like the first thing people should understand is it it might help to ha have some sort of traffic and a Facebook page with likes and a website. Um, we'll dive a little bit yep. deeper later about like, you know, getting the pixel installed, which for some people is really confusing and it, rightfully so. So it's confusing when people are getting started out. Um, so, okay, so that's good. And I like what you said earlier about the 30 day window because that I guess cl makes it a little easier too, just to calculate because I can say like, yeah. I have my membership program and it starts out at $9 a month. And so if I could get someone signing up for one month and I guess if it costs less than $9, for that you're in league. the money and when i think about that i'm like wait it shouldn't be that hard to do that <laughs> <laughs> but i think when you have that clarity of kind of a strategy of like okay all i got to do is make a sale for less than nine dollars per sale and then you kind of you're not kind of scared about well is this gonna am i going to spend a fortune mm -hmm. you just start with remarketing list which is usually quite small which is a very slow budget and they're the most responsive mm -hmm. and it's a great way to test if your offer is something that people will buy i mean for in your case you know that they're buying it because you've got an existing membership mm -hmm. but it's just a nice little way to to get an roi to get yeah. that return on investment build a profitable remarketing funnel and then phase two is to start building out that remarketing funnel. Okay. So, so I guess I'm wondering, uh, so when you're doing your retar your first retargeting campaign, are we promoting directly a product then to get someone to actually buy? Or is there, if, if there's someone on Facebook, are we sending them to an opt-in form for a free lead ma magnet? Or are we really just first trying to get people to buy a product? Um, I guess you could do either. It depends. Most people, you know, might have a database of people who've already bought or who've already got that lead magnet, in which case you're not going to offer them a different lead magnet. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd offer them to buy. Personally, I think just go straight for getting them to buy something because it's a remarketing list mm -hmm. and they've engaged with you already. I wouldn't go for cold traffic, be it people who've never heard of you trying to sell mm -hmm. no then you'd offer them a lead magnet but remarketing lists will buy will buy all the time i don't think i'm not a big believer in this like ascension model you know where they have to have opted in first somebody who's read a couple of blog articles might just be ready to buy without even downloading a lead magnet okay cool so we'll kind of lay that down as like maybe a rule to start out with that maybe can be broken but if you're retargeting someone who's already aware of you it's okay to go straight for the sale um, if you're targeting tar cold traffic, then we're using more cold magnet or cold um, driving yeah. to a lead magnet. Um, okay. So. And another thing yeah, I yeah. will mention, sorry, mm -hmm. on this is is to combine your remarketing ads with your email marketing. And I kind of like the analogy of, you know, surround sound with speakers. Like when you listen to headphones with one earpiece in it sounds very different to with two earpieces in um so we combine email marketing with facebook ads mm. and it works extremely well for the very reason that 
email open rates are not 100%. We all know that. Sometimes your emails go to the promotions tab if you use Gmail, etc. And the added benefit is also in Facebook is that share button. And what we find is we have we run some pretty complex well, – clients have some pretty complex sales funnels which we run ads for and we combine those ads through the sales funnel and at the even at the bottom of the funnel where we're leading up to this final offer we'll run an ad in conjunction with the email and people will share it mm. they're sharing the final offer that we have been nurturing these people for i mean it still astounds me you know so, if you can yeah. so you're actually saying that like where you're sending ads to people who are on your email list and at the yes. same time sending them an email about the same content or whatever the ad is, you're talking about that through email as well. Yeah. So for example, for this particular client that I'm kind of, that we do it for, they have a free video series that we run um, Facebook ads to get people to opt in for that free video series. That video series runs for four days via email. So day one, video one is issued. Day two, video two is issued. And it's basically warming people up to build trust and, and provide value so that on day five, when the final offer is emailed to them, they are they feel confident with the brand and, and, and the value of the content that these people provide. So rather than just pitch this offer via email, we run Facebook ads to those people mm -hmm. and people will share that Facebook ad with the special offer having yeah. done the video course. So we don't care that if someone just bypasses that funnel and goes straight to the bottom offer, that's what we want. And that's what happens when yeah. you combine your ads in conjunction with email. Got it. And I, I remember talking to someone before who was actually going as far as like, doing like daily ads that matched the video like they would have a video in an email and then they would have a separate ad showing to them about that video that they watch are you going as far as that or is it really just getting them onto an email list some sequence where they go through that video series and then at the end they're hit with another ad or are you also doing individual types of ads throughout this process in this particular case of this client, we are not doing the individual ads on day one or day two or day three. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're just doing the ad at the bottom of the funnel. Got it. Okay. And I guess the benefit of this, as I said, is that people will share it, which is free. You don't pay for that from Facebook ads perspective, but it's endorsed by them. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to forward an email to all their friends with yeah. the offer, but they will share it on Facebook with all their network. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's back up a little bit. Um, so I didn't really ask you, we have all these different types of ads, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. What, where should people be starting if they want sort of the easiest and maybe the best chance of success right now? So that's a good question. And I guess this is why, um, PPC is, um, it's sometimes hard for some people because it's sort of they confuse us to the best place to start, but it really depends on your business. And what I mean is like if you've got a business where people are searching for, for an answer to their problem, there's intent there, then I'm a big believer that nothing really beats Google search. Those, you know, go to google.com, you type in something and those text ads that come up. The fact that there's, in, you know, you can slide your business card under the nose of someone at the very point that they've looked for it is an amazing advertising opportunity. But you pay a premium for that. Google search is very, very expensive and there are some really expensive keywords out there. Um, so it depends on your industry and it depends on if it's something that they're searching for. If you've got a brand new product which – it's, there's no no one searching for it. Well, then you can't do that, obviously. Um, but you know, for most businesses, you can pretty much find a way to adapt Facebook ads to suit it, mm -hmm. purely because you can laser focus on your target audience. Their their audience targeting is insane, actually, <laughs> and you can kind of like you know go in with laser focus, even if 
it's a tiny audience. It kind of doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. You can just hone in with with pretty good accuracy um, because obviously people input a lot of information in their profile, but Facebook also buy a lot of data, which people don't really know. Mm. Um, so, and also the social kind of aspect of Facebook is also really good. Um, there's that share button, as I mentioned before, where people can share your ads and they can help you find people. So often we'll include in some of our Facebook ads, you know, at the bottom of the ad tag and share with anyone who you might think this is good for and people do it. Like it's, it still astounds me that people do, you know, and if that's, I guess the, um, it really, your success with Facebook hinges on what you're offering people and if it's something of value. So starting out, I guess, yeah, I'd think about is there intent? Are people searching for things? Um, and really who is your target customer and where are they hanging out online? Maybe you just want to run some banner ads on some specific websites even as a starting point. I think that's what you got to think just where, where do these people hang out online? Mm, mm-hmm. And it's a, a challenge of how well do you know your target customer? Hey, Phil here. Are you enjoying this episode? I really hope you are. And I hope you're learning to become a better online course creator. If you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and get your free trial of the full flagship program, the masterclass for online course creators. Get more information at onlinecoursemasters.com. Yeah, that and that can be hard when you're kind of just getting started out and you don't don't really know how to figure that out. Um, so for someone who's like listening to this and I don't know what topic they're they're in, but they have maybe like one or two courses and they have their website. Um, their courses are just on Udemy though, where, and they, they do have retargeting set up, um, on their website and maybe they've got a Facebook page too. Um, let's kind of, I don't know if this is, I guess, repeating ourselves, but what's the first ad that that person should run? Um, like specifically what kind of should the ad say, who should they I guess they're retargeting, so they're targeting their audience, but are they targeting promoting their Udemy course or do you advise against promoting a course on Udemy? Should it be their self-hosted course if they have something like that? I am not a fan of promoting a Udemy course. I will never promote my Udemy course, much to the shock and horror of Udemy. (laughs) If you're listening, I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, I'm personally just not a believer in it. Like if I've got a customer... I would prefer to own that customer, be it Mm -hmm. the relationship, the email address. And what I do find is that somebody who's bought something once from me will often buy again, as lots of people buy. I've got four Udemy courses. They buy all of them, you know. So I don't want to be sending any customers to Udemy because they will – I lose them. It's diluted in all the noise that's there and it's a really discount platform. Mm -hmm. So that's my belief. But I know lots of people will send their traffic to Udemy um, and they obviously do better on Udemy than I do. But personally, I make much more money from promoting my own courses on my own website Mm -hmm. than I do from Udemy. So I guess that's just my belief. But if you're starting, I guess if you're starting out, I just it just hinges on who your target customer is and, and how can you get in front of them and how can you offer them something that is so irresistible. Mm. That's the, that's what you've got to really think. What is irresistible to my target customer that they're prepared to give me their email address and everyone's thinking, if I give you my email address, am I going to be spammed and I'm never going to be able to hear the end of you? So it's got to be irresistible enough that they're willing to take that risk Mm. or Mm. how big of a problem are you solving for me that I will give you money for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so that sounds like it's more of you're getting people on a, uh, giving someone a lead magnet or something like that away. Either a lead magnet or a sale. Mm -hmm. Like it's what, what's irresistible to them that they just, what's dangling that 
freshly baked cookie straight out of the oven that's permeating that smell that they go, I just got to have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what about like this idea of having a, a premium product versus maybe that's maybe, you know, $100, $200 or more versus having a, a smaller product like my membership site that's $9 a month or maybe a smaller course that's, you know, 20 to $50. Do you find that it's easier to, you know, make money off of ads that for a premium course or are the smaller products fine as well? I would say, um, it, well, it really depends. Um, I'm a believer in if you're going to buy traffic, try and sell a higher price product, but it, it, once again, I guess it sounds a bit of a cop out, but it kind of hinges on how big of a problem are you solving for someone? Yeah. And if you are solving a big problem, they'll, people will pay more money for it. It's just that simple, you know. Yeah, I guess Versus I'm thinking an impulse buy. Yeah, I, I think I'm thinking like for myself. I'm trying to think like, okay, what would be my first ads? And you know, one of the problems I solve is helping people take photos and learn the basics of photography, which isn't a super high value. Um, solution because people can typically find that information on for free on YouTube or other places. But I have like maybe if I have a free course um, or maybe a basic course or something that is higher quality than those other places, um, but it's not a two or three hundred dollar product. It's a fifteen or twenty dollar product, and so I'm wondering if that's even like you know would be worth promoting. Um, I mean, there's a large audience for it i would go with I, so i would promote that product and i would price it at like 29 dollars. Mm-hmm. so it's it's a threshold that people wouldn't think too much about mm-hmm. and i would frame it in such a way of you know take the perfect photos and then you gotta ask yourself so what like what what's the next step why do you want to take good photos so you capture amazing memories of your children let's mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. You, you know kind of go for that emotional part of why you want to take good photos? What's the impact of that? Yeah, and and go for that kind of emotional trigger. Yeah, that's true, and that goes the same for promoting courses. You're always trying to t- sell that benefit more than just the you know yeah. the actual skill or whatever it is. What's the benefit of that skill? Um, okay, cool. So maybe we can talk a little bit more about if we're not retargeting, if we are trying to get cold traffic onto an email list or into our, yeah, I guess our email list. Is that like the best thing is to try to get cold traffic onto an email list or should we be yeah. doing anything else with cold traffic? Look, people argue these days that the, with the power of remarketing, you don't really need an email list. Mm. Um, and I am not a believer of that personally, like with this whole emergence of yeah, I guess the power of remarketing as well as chatbots, for example, you know, messenger ads, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm a bit old school and I'm not a believer that to not do that. That is what you want to do because there you can continue a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to continue that conversation and develop a relationship with people via ads alone. So yes, like pretty much all ads would be to get people on an email list or also to um, to make sales. But when I say just to get people on an email list, you can promote a blog post, for example, mm-hmm. where at the bottom of the blog post is some kind of content upgrade. So you're not just all about just straight to an opt-in, let's get mm-hmm. that email. It's I want to give you some value. If you like this, you might be interested in in this content upgrade with where I give you even more value. I've been wondering that about kind of approach. yeah, and I've been wondering about that idea. Um, like with my my blog articles that I think are good, if I maybe optimize the page a little bit better, so there's an opt-in form that like clearly has like a specific you know lead magnet for that article or something like that. But so you're saying that maybe it would be good to like spend a few bucks here and there promoting just my regular content um, on on my yeah, website because you. Yeah, because it's like it serves a couple of purposes. It's it it's a great way to test audiences on Facebook, for example, to see which audiences like your content. And then when you are ready to show someone an offer for your membership, you know which audiences 
are receptive to your content so you don't waste money on audiences that aren't interested. So that's number mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Number two, you're building out your remarketing list. So you're filling that remarketing funnel, which hopefully you had profitable by just testing your remarketing campaign. And hopefully people will share your content because it was so valuable and you'll get a sense of which content people are interested in, which content people aren't interested in. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that um, like Facebook or I don't know, it might be the same, but is Facebook or Google better for that kind of promotion of like a blog post? Facebook? Facebook, 100% Facebook, yeah. So we will test audience. So we will promote content and um, do it very structured so that we'll test um, audiences on their own with that same piece of content, as I said, to see which audiences like our free stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyone who likes the free stuff is most likely to be interested in our paid stuff. The people who don't like the free stuff, I'm not even going to bother showing them an ad. Right. It's a great way to really cheaply test audiences mm-hmm. and interest targeting on Facebook. And, and so I well, I guess my next question is like specifically how how does someone like choose an audience uh, for one of those those ads um, if it's not retargeting like what you know am I looking f- I know maybe the answer is like well you should know your demographic and you should <laughs> test that out first but is there for people who have never even opened up Facebook ads like I know they have like interests and lookalike audiences yep. like wh- what are we looking at here? Okay, so Facebook kind of help you along here a little bit. So they've got a tool within the ads manager called Audience Insights, which you can – so it's like say in your industry, if you've got a big competitor who's like a big player in your space, you could hopefully put that particular competitor into Audience Insights mm-hmm. and they will tell you of the people who like this particular competitor, what else do they like, what other – pages or interests do they have and you know you're building a profile of people like for example you know in my audience people who are interested in ads yes I could go after the likes of digital marketer or Perry Marshall for example but I can also go a little bit left of field and and things that are not not direct competitors to me so mm-hmm. like somebody who for example uses Infusionsoft right is a marketing piece of software that's email marketing they're serious about their business they're spending three hundred dollars on a piece of software well then they're going to be interested in running ads so Mm -hmm. it's it's building a overall profile so what software do people use so in your industry what software do they use that is would be a no it's just helping you sort of identify your target customer Mm -hmm. what podcasts do they listen to what books do they read where do they actually spend money Mm-hmm. is is something to think of as well so and is there you know there you're talking about people using software um it, how do you actually target that audience is that an option in facebook to like put in the word infusionsoft as a target keyword or like yep. and can you also i believe you can but can you target people who like other people's pages or groups is that still, so still a you thing can- so you can, that, that particular page does have to be big enough to target because Facebook don't want to feel that you're sort of micro-targeting sort of small audiences of like 100. Mm-hmm. So your next question is probably is how big does that audience have to be? They haven't actually come out and said it needs to be X size, um, but it's it's decent-sized audiences that you can target so you know Tim Ferriss, Digital Marketer, mm-hmm. all those big players in, in the industry you can definitely target them, but their, their reach is also quite wide. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Facebook have that tool called audience insights. And if you've got a decent remarketing list, you can upload your remarketing list to that audience insights and say, Hey, Facebook, here's a list of everyone who's come to my website. What else do they like? So that's at least your audience, you know, Mm -hmm. not, you're not kind of guessing, you know, that they're your audience. You've come to your website and you can, that can help you build a profile. Another tool that they've recently introduced is their own analytics kind of, um, not, not platform, it's still part of the ad manager, but uh, tool, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it will tell you the of the people who, let's say, like your page, what where's the audience overlap with other particular pages. So you mm-hmm. can have a look through there as, and, and it will also tell you the size of that particular audience as well. So it will help you once again build a profile of, 
other stuff. So yeah, like everyone kind of is very narrow focused, I find in terms of interests that they target, but the best success that we have had is kind of going with a complement tool Mm -hmm. because they're often the thing, the things that most people don't target. Yeah. And I like that idea of like, what do people actually spend money on and who are, who is spending money on those complimentary things? Um, that those are great people to target. And so we're, yeah. So you might go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say you (laughs) might target people who like Camtasia Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, screen flow, that yeah. kind of stuff. Or Ado- all these Adobe programs or if I wanted to like retarget or target people who might be interested in my podcast, maybe like teachable. I don't know if they're large enough, but something like that. Exactly. Skillshare, yeah. Udemy, you can target Udemy. I mean, yeah. They're huge. Yeah. As well as, um, yeah, like email software, active mm-hmm. campaign. Um, there's so many. Cool. Okay. So that's kind of picking your target audience and then you recommend, you know, testing out different audiences, see who responds to your ads. Uh, But when you actually set up your ad, there's lots of different options and you don't have to walk through everything. But I know there's like different options for like pay per click, pay per impression. Um, What do you recommend for like, how much should we be spending to test per art per audience? Like, per day, like for the whole thing to get a real good look. Um, do you have an advice on that? <laughs> um, I prefer the paper impression um, option within Facebook. Um, I, especially when starting out, I want to let Facebook do its thing. Mm-hmm. The algorithm is so good in Facebook that I just go, here's loosely what I want, go away and do your thing. So I don't want to restrict it to enforce a pay-per-click buying mechanism. Um, I I just do the impression and I very, very rarely will switch over to a PPC Mm -hmm. um, model for Facebook. And in terms of how much to spend, I think, you know, you know after a few days if it's not, you're not getting kind of some traction. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it also hinges on how, see, okay, Let's just back up a step. When you install the Facebook pixel on your website, Facebook is learning about who your target customer is. They're, they're learning because they know everything about us. Like, mm-hmm. let's just be honest, privacy is gone. <laughs> so um, <laughs> they, uh, they're they learning uh, all about us. So I like to think of it sort of like how, how smart is your Facebook pixel. So if you've got a pe- pixel that's installed on your website for a while and you've got a decent size remarketing list it will know who to show your ads to Mm -hmm. so if you have a really kind of well-trained pixel then a couple of days you'll know if an audience is working or not as opposed to if you're just starting out facebook's still learning who your target person is Mm -hmm. so they need a little bit more time Mm -hmm. and so and that is when you're i know there's like all these tangents but is that when you're creating an audience based off of your pixel or your your website traffic just in or is it or are just, they just using that da- so they're using that data in general just when choosing who to show your ads to if you have the pixel uh, so the pixel is installed on your website and it, mm-hmm. the pixel sort of learns who is coming to your website and doing things so when you are ready to show an ad to a cold audience that's when you're relying on the pixel you're leaning on that pixel to skew your ads to show more people who are more inclined to be like your audience and less away from people who aren't retargeting it's showing to everyone got it it's it's when you it's when you pick an audience size of a million people let's Mm -hmm. say like um tim ferris has a huge reach you're not going to show a million people your ad Mm-hmm. So Facebook will skew the portion of Tim Ferriss's audience that are more likely to be your kind of customer. Mm, interesting. Okay. And just to clarify, that's like automatically happening. I don't have to like turn on a specific setting or anything to do that. No. Got it. No, it automatically, that's why the, this is where the Facebook algorithm kicks in. Got it. Okay. And so for people listening, it's kind of difficult to dive into how you actually install a pixel, but 
it's uh, it can be confusing, but there's YouTube videos. Alana, you have a do you have a class on retargeting on Facebook right now yet? I do actually. I've got a free video course on my website. Actually, okay, cool. Well, then walking ma- you through where to find the pixel, how to install it, all that. Perfect, and I'll include a link to that on the show notes of uh, this episode at onlinecoursemasters.com. So that'll help people who are confused about that. Okay, so we're working our way through. We've got our <laughs> our target audience. Um, we know a little bit more about how we spend. So we start running our ad. And actually, before we do that, is are there any tips for like ad copy, ad images, things that you, you've seen work, not work in terms of what you should include on like a Facebook ad for example yeah so image is critical like you it, yeah the you have to think like pretty much 90 percent of your response is going to come from a mobile so your worst enemy is that person's thumb as they're scrolling past on their smartphone so you need an image that is going to stop that thumb in its tracks they go, oh, what you know, something eye-catching, you know. Um, so image is is critical, um, and there's a lot. I mean, Facebook provide free stock images as well as there's lots of royalty free stock images that you can use, um, and ad copy is also critical. And in fact, we have we've tested short copy versus long copy, and by you know, so short kind of copy in an ad versus a really long ad where someone does have to click that more button. And, you know, I'm constantly humbled by this stuff online. So that's why we, we test everything. And most of the time long copy wins, which I never would have thought, you know, I'm the first to say I would have thought in this world where we live with no intention spans, Mm -hmm. short copy would win every time, but no way. Because I, and if I think about it, what ends up happening is that the long copy ad almost becomes like a mini mini landing page almost and you can really um, warm people up without them having to commit to anything at this point. They don't have to actually have clicked on an ad, I mean gone to a website, et cetera, and left their Facebook experience. Um, And we also find that story-based ads also work very, very well. So really, you know, delving deep into somebody's journey or struggle or whatever people really resonate with a story Mm -hmm. and because it's conducive to that platform Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so do you think testimonials are good to include in copy or like quotes or anything like from like buyer experiences you have to be careful with testimonials on just in terms of like claims and stuff like that from facebook sort of policy point Mm -hmm. of view but if they're quite benign in terms of making specific claims then sure like what whatever is um going to help your ideal customer sort of break down their barriers to think yeah this person can really help me then absolutely as well as um yeah like you also put links to where you're sending people in the ad copy as well Mm -hmm. um we're testing emojis we find emojis for some reason, work well. It's whatever is sort of like people's guards are up, you know, so it's whatever can break down those Mm -hmm. guards Mm -hmm. and warm people up is what is receptive to people. Okay, cool. I love it. Long story base. I like that. Emojis. (laughs) Good advice. So we got, (laughs) so, okay, now we got our ads. We click the run button and we got some different ads or the same ad going to different audiences and this is just for getting someone on our email list, for example, where we're not necessarily promoting something right away. And so after a few days, we're starting to get this data. How, how do I know if something is successful or not when I'm not like basing it off of, okay, from this ad, I'm making X amount of, of dollars? Or is it just kind of like, that's just this is just the beginning where we're just learning what the audience is? Or should there be certain like percentages that we should kind of think about in terms of like, okay, I spent this much money and I got this amount of people on my email list. Um, How do we know if we're doing it right, I guess? Okay. So it really depends on what your goal is, obviously. If you're building a remarketing list, you're promoting content, you're kind of going down that route, I'd really look at how much you're paying for that click 
how much you're paying for that traffic to come. So, the, and there's sort of two fields in the ads manager. One is, um, you know, the, like a CPC for all. So how much? You, so if that would include somebody who even just liked it or clicked on the more button, versus the cost per click for a link click. And that's sort of an important distinction. And that's somebody who has actually left Facebook and gone to your website. So. Um, what's a good metric? You know, I wouldn't want to be paying $3 for a link click because that's sort of really on the high side on Facebook. Um, and I'd really kind of have a look at what social metrics I'm getting on there. Are people sharing it? Are they tagging people? Um, is it sort of getting a bit of a life of its own in terms of the virality aspect of it? And we've got blog posts that we just promote that are evergreen and they're, why would I ever stop them? They're just getting so much love that, let's just keep that going forever, you know, yeah. um, versus, you know, if you've got a campaign with the objective being to get email database subscribers, well, you it will tell you when you set up the tracking how much is costing you per subscriber. So that comes back to what we started talking about is how much is a lean worth to you. Mm-hmm. It, that, the same applies to a subscriber, mm-hmm. let alone somebody who purchases. So that obviously would be a little bit less. And then if you structure it properly, you can see what each interest or audience interest is costing you on a per lead basis. Okay. And so to track how much, so it does Facebook connect with your, how do you f- figure out how much, um, I guess like how, how are you connecting the email, knowing how many people are subscribing per ad that you send? How is it, how is Facebook tracking who actually signs up for your email list? Oh, okay. So when you um, create your ad account and you install the pixel and you create your audiences, the next step is to create um, conversion tracking and the conversion Mm -hmm. being whatever is success for you. So you would create a conversion event of somebody who signs up to your email list so that Facebook knows. Like let's say you're promoting a piece of content and they read that content and then they see on the sidebar that you've got to subscribe to your email list and they do that. Facebook will be able to attribute that person who clicked on that blog post then signed up to your email list. Okay. And you can work out then the cost per that subscriber. Got it. Okay, cool. So you said that $3 per link click is a bit expensive. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, okay. that's too high. But that... it depends, you know, like that's that would be for just promoting a piece of content. Mm-hmm. You know, if if that person is becoming a subscriber and the subscriber is worth five dollars to you, well then, happy days. You're, yeah. you're under that threshold. Yeah, and I guess that's the whole other side of this is that, <laughs> it, you know, we each have to do the research ourselves or c- crunch the numbers. Like I don't even know off the top of my head how much a subscriber is worth, and so I haven't even like, you know, really figured that out myself and. I guess I don't know what 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 are the first steps to figuring that out myself. Um, I guess I could look at so like I the different campaigns have to... I have um, for promoting an actual product, but um, yeah, I don't That's know. Do right. you have advice? Yeah, yeah. I think you've got to just look at so people have an email marketing sales funnel. Mm-hmm. What that funnel conversion rate is? Yeah. So if you get a hundred subscribers. And at the end, you get X dollars of revenue divided by 100 is what that funnel kind of converts at. Yeah. I don't know the maths off the top of my head. But, yeah, you work out that funnel conversion rate and then sort of work backwards. Got it. I mean, it's all, like, not that difficult. It's just a lot that has to be set up and you have to, like, make sure the, you know, you understand that and you understand, like, ta- you know, how – you to calculate that on your own. Um, so I can see even for me, it's a little bit confusing and overwhelming, but it's one of those things where it's just like, I need to sit down and, and do it and make sure that I'm calculating and understanding how much my subscribers are worth. Because then I feel like for me, the ad, doing ads wouldn't be as daunting, um, you know, because mm. I'm not like shooting in the dark. Yeah. And I think, you know, to, mitigate that confusion the first step is probably just trying to make some sales from your remarketing list just you're trying to get that return on investment mm-hmm. straight away mm-hmm. because if you st- if you start sort of 
doing it to get email subscribers, there's a much longer delay in when you get that return from that investment. Yeah. So really, first things first is just get more money back than what you put into your ads, work out what, what these people want, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of get an idea of right now I've just got to fill that funnel and let's work it out. And, you know, your cost per lead might change actually mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you might find the lead quality a little bit different. But I guess if you just did it on a monthly basis, um, you could you could work that out. Yeah. Because okay. it, it, it probably will change. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely not going to be fixed. Okay. So for my own uh, benefit, I have my membership program. It's $9 a month, super affordable, and it has all kinds of t courses, all kinds of topics. And so when someone, if I'm retargeting people who have come to my website, um, who, or even people who have visited that page for that, or that sales page or whatever, should I be promoting it as like, should I create an ad for like, Hey, here's my monthly membership. Do you want to enroll? Or should I be like promoting like a specific benefit? Like, are you a photographer? Like, do you want to take better photos? Like, don't forget about my membership or something like that. Or should I just like promote it as like a, I don't know, general, um, you know, Phil's membership, video school online membership. I guess like I'm trying to figure out what I should do. Yeah. Uh, I think you could go lots of different ways. Um, it depends how um, you might want to try and run some kind of offer, you know, an offer that ends and mm -hmm. that expires, you know, it's maybe it's a $1 trial for three days mm -hmm. and then it, and then it kind of kicks in. So it's a kind of like a, a way to try before you buy a little bit. I mean, $9 is not a lot of money, you yeah. know, <laughs> maybe it's some kind of offer for an annual thing that it's, it's a, just becomes a no brainer, you know, mm -hmm. $50 when you sign up for the year, I don't mm -hmm. know, 40, whatever, I'm making it up. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can try and get good, return on investment that way um, as well as kind of maybe doing a video um, a video ad walking people through what it looks like in your membership mm. here you can find t tutorials on xyz you know to kind of give people a bit of an insider look mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah like yeah, it's kind of limited by your that could yeah. be kind of a cool thing like if it was a video where i was like hey like i know you i know you visited my website did you know that i have a membership site here's what you get when you sign up you can see all the classes that you enroll in all the different skills that you could get um something like that I might, probably i don't know what do you think i probably wouldn't say i know you've been to my website before i think people <laughs> find that a little bit creepy yeah. you know? <laughs> i usually like to leave that that out um <laughs> I think it, if you kind of, you know, it's targeted in that the content's on point, but you don't kind of refer to their past online behavior. People don't really like I that. I saw you last so maybe night say, looking at my website. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have a recording of you, you know. Um, so, yeah, I would kind of go through, um, you know, your membership and what you offer people and here's some amazing results that people have got and kind of, off cut to some, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm making it up. But, you know, I would do some kind of a video ad. I think they work really well. Okay. And then what you could do with a video ad is of the people that watch a certain portion of your video, that's another remarketing audience. So, mm. Wow. Um, that's, yeah, I like it. This stuff is, you can do so much with it. <laughs> I that's know. why, you know, I just think start with remarketing before, you know, walk before you run, okay. I think. Okay. And and make your money back. That that's your that's your ultimate goal. Yeah. And that's your lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. And okay. I think you can test what ad and what offer works on those people because once you work that out, well then it's just about getting more people onto your remarketing list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Finding what what people want and the creative that gets them over the line is um is often the hard part. Mhm. Mm Okay. All right. I mean, I, I'm going to just ask one more question. I could keep, you know, t diving into this further and maybe we'll have to have you on or, or something. I, I'm phase sure. two. Yeah, do a phase two, but it, it kind of like a random question, just of something that I've heard about. Have you done any like, is there's like something on Facebook where you can get people to sign up directly on Facebook for your, your email list? Have you the heard lead of ads. that? The yeah. lead ads. Yeah. Have you 
played with that? Do yeah. you recommend that? I played with them a lot. Uh, so when they first came out, it was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is going to be a game changer. Um, and when they first came out, I didn't really like them because you couldn't do remarketing. So then Facebook listened and um, they did enable that. So I then tested them heavily. Um, but I found the lead quality to be not all that great, mm. actually. Mm-hmm. Some people love them. Um, and, yeah, like I, for example, I was testing it for a gym. I thought, perfect, like let's just run some kind of challenge and we'll just do lead ads and it triggers, you know, you can, one of the fields can be in the form within the Facebook interface is a mobile phone and then the, the gym owner just calls them. So we did that for a little while and he was getting all these leads and he'd call these people and um, the, I remember he told me one end of the conversation was like, he said, oh, you know, you've signed up for the challenge and this person's like, no, I didn't. And then like, he's like, well, yeah, you, you did, you know, and he's like, and the guy said, oh, I just thought I was liking the ad. So I was <laughs> oh, like, okay. so people kind of got no idea. So, uh, yeah, that was my experience is I found the lead quality not great. What I am going to try and do is just try it for remarketing. So mm-hmm. try a lead ad for remarketing where hopefully I can try and weed out some of the bad quality leads Mm -hmm. because they definitely do convert better Mm -hmm. no doubt about it but personally i'm a believer in quality over quantity Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay um but yeah but they are good i think hopefully maybe people are getting a bit more savvy and they know that the difference between liking an ad and feeling in a lead form (laughs) yeah (laughs) right you never know you know (laughs) now that you mentioned that i i remember the person who mentioned the lead ads to me said that he also felt like the quality wasn't as good um as just normal people who sign up for his email list so interesting yeah okay well i'm i'm gonna ask you to share where people can find you online and everything but this episode is actually going to come out probably at the very end of december or maybe the first week of january or something and that's my goal is in 2018 i'm gonna really dive into figuring out figuring out ads and so yeah maybe we'll have a follow-up episode where after i run some ads we can see how they did and maybe tear me apart (laughs) (laughs) sounds good uh yeah so if you want to find me um just go to greenarrowdigital.com or i've also got a podcast you can hear uh, yours truly phil on there as well episode to be released shortly um at talking web marketing in uh podcasts and yeah so usually green arrow digital is the best way to find me perfect and i'll include links on onlinecoursemasters.com and i'll get that um series of videos that you mentioned about installing your pixel and everything like that uh, and i'll include links to that as well so yeah cool cool thank you so much for being on the show and uh we'll, we'll talk soon have a great day awesome thanks so much phil bye I hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, if you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and sign up for your free trial of my flagship program, the Online Course Masters Masterclass. Yep, that's right. It's a masterclass designed to take you from zero to hero, creating and selling your very own online courses. If you haven't done so yet, please leave a review for this show wherever you listen. This is how we can help expand our audience and help teach the world. Thanks so much and we'll see you next week in the next edition of the Online Course Masters Show.